one of the major and most effective forms of disinformation is forgery. Letters, telegrams, memoranda are forged on a regular basis. Dr. Bittman explains. I would say that the major successes were in developing countries where uh, the, the governments didn't have the expertise to analyze properly these operations. And for example, sometimes in very cheap forgeries are accepted, anti-American forgeries, forgeries of American documents, are accepted in developing countries as a genuine proof of American conspiracy. Uh, for example, the, um, in some ways the most damaging story uh, one of these active measures of disinformation, and one almost uses the term interchangeably here. We've uh, occurred in Ghana in uh, the last day of March of 83, where the number two man in the government, uh, key advisor to uh, President Rawlings, got up, held a press conference, and uh, waved a document around and said, I have the proof. This document, a report of the West German Embassy of a conversation with the American ambassador, Thomas Smith, in which he explained how and why the Americans were going to overthrow the Rawlings government. Uh, this led to a uh, sharp deterioration of relations between the United States and Ghana. Uh, it took some time to uh, work that out. Eventually, the Ghanaians accepted our and the West German uh, explanations of why this was a fake document. Letters and telegrams are not the only forgeries. During this time, for example, the Czechoslovak and and uh, East German intelligence, service, intelligence services started a worldwide campaign to undermine, uh, to paralyze the operations of CIA. And at the time, the East Germans came with the initiative to publish a book called Who is Who in CIA. Uh, the information came from Czechoslovak and East German archives, and of course under the Soviet supervision.